Hey guys, Proper English here, and today I've got some more signal strength memory for you. The last time I showed you some signal strength memory, it was RAM. Now, remember, RAM has a write function, which is saving the data, which we have here. If I flip this lever, we see our data gets saved, and that's the same exact logic that I used in my RAM cell. But unlike the RAM cell, we see our output immediately, right? In RAM, you have a read, which controls when the output is on. And so this is a bit different. It's actually two wide tileable. I set this up so that it stacks up nice and neat. And it's pretty compact. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is we have a reset so I can clear out the memory cells very easily. Now there's one more feature that I'll point out before we get into how this works. If I want to change this memory so it's basic on off memory instead of signal strength memory, all I need to do is throw a repeater right in there instead of a comparator and now when I save the data it's simple on off right we're not worrying about signal strength in this cell anymore but we still have this really nice cell with an easy reset so it's pretty cool now one of the reasons that I wanted to show this to you is because there are a few things that I did that I think are a little interesting in terms of design with comparators so let's review the logic for building a signal strength memory cell and we'll take a look at some of the tricks that I used to make this too wide and stackable. Alright, so like I said, this memory uses the same exact system for saving data that my RAM did. You can see we've got a comparator feeding into another comparator. This one's set to subtract and that feeds back into our original comparator creating the memory loop. Now we've also got a comparator on the input. This one's set to subtract and we're subtracting 15 from our data input. That reduces the data input to zero so that it doesn't mess with our memory cell unless we want to save data. Now when I want to save data and I flip this lever, two things happen. The first thing that happens is we subtract 15 from what was already in the memory cell. That clears it out. The other thing that happens is we turn this torch off so we're no longer subtracting 15 from our data input. That allows the data to move right through into this memory cell and we can save it there. Now the nice thing is this moves immediately through the memory cell so we can see our data output without much delay. Now when I come down here and I flip this lever, turn it off, again two things happen. First we stop subtracting 15 from our memory cell so now the data can be saved in the comparator loop. We also resume subtracting 15 from our data input so now a new input will not overwrite the old input. We get the same output because we're not saving anything right now. And so as I showed you before we've also got this neat reset function and so the way this works is when I turn the reset on we subtract 15 from the memory cell but we're not turning off the subtraction from our input control alright so that means no new data is coming in but we're deleting the data that was already in the comparator loop and so now that we've gone through the logic for how this thing works Let's take a look at one neat little design feature that allows this to be too wide tileable, nice and compact. One of the things that can be both very useful and very frustrating about the comparator block is it can take a B input from both sides of the block. In this case, it's very useful because we've got 8 bits here, but because the comparator block takes an input from both sides, we only need four lines coming off of our control line. All right, so that makes this really easy to stack up because anytime we're turning this line off over here, well, this one's being affected, this one's being affected, all of them are being affected, so we can control multiple bits with one line. And that's nice and simple. Like I said, sometimes this gets in the way because we'll need to do some funky staggering, but other times it's really useful. This is one of those times and I like simple things, so I'm pretty happy with this. Anyway, I just wanted to show you another design for some memory. This one's arranged differently, it's used differently, and at some point I'm probably going to get into some of the uses for all these different types of memory. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.